Good morning and salutations YouTube. Welcome to my channel. Hey guys, this is going to be a, a video commentary in regards to a live debate that I have seen that I watched uh, on the Rubin Report uh, between Blair White and a woman named Candace Owens. So if you're new to my channel, basically I'm going to do a short intro and then we're going to go into the nitty gritty of the video itself. Uh, for those of you who have come across this video, I am uh, Everyday Oppression. I am a LGBT member, a bisexual male who once identified as a liberal and very much like Candace Owens, uh, identified as liberal, now identify as conservative. Um, labels don't really mean much anymore, but I find that her story is very similar to my story. Um, and I do understand that when people flip signs, uh, whether suddenly or over a slow period of time, um, that might leave a few people to question their intentions. So I labeled as liberal. I went to a liberal arts college. You know, I did everything artsy fartsy. And then recently in maybe the last two, three years, I actually switched signs and became more conservative. Now that doesn't make me a racist. That doesn't make me evil. It just means that my political stance, my reality stance and the way that I look at life um, and human behaviors within that life uh, has altered uh, because of my experiences. So I just want to point out that if you are a conservative or have more conservative views, that doesn't automatically make you a bad person. Everyday Oppression, that's my channel. Look up my other videos and, you know, we can go from there. Without further ado, I'm just going to get right into it. I might split this up into two possibly three videos because I do want to, I feel it's important to get through it. Um, so bear with me. If you hear any noise in the background, I am currently doing my dishwashing. So, you know, there's that. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, everybody. So uh, this is a live debate on the Rubin Report on YouTube uh, entitled Red Pill Black and Blair White Talk Social Autopsy and Much More. For the purpose of these, uh, this video or series of videos, I'm going to play out the video and then I'm going to pause it to make my commentary about it. And then I'll let you guys decide uh, which side you agree with, uh, who do you disagree with, and what do you think their intentions are. So let's begin. Here we go. All right, YouTube. This is it. All of you, all of you out there in the digital universe have been waiting for this and especially on the Twitter, uh, the anonymous people and the furry cats and the green frogs and the rest of you, you've all wanted this. Uh, well, I don't think all of us have wanted it, but most of us who are uh, in, the, in the know about this story are, yes. So I want to set a couple things up before uh, I mention and I say hello to my guests today. Uh, I'm sitting between two people that I consider friends, two people that I respect, two people that were brave enough to not just fight about things online and from the comforts of anonymity, but two people who were willing to sit across from each other with serious disagreements, uh, with some, some bad blood there and some things being said already, uh, but were willing to come here and talk about everything that we're gonna talk about for the next hour. Uh, I feel like this is a little bit of ego stroking, but, uh, you know, he's a host of a show and of course he has to be on good ties and introduce the show. So that already is a win for everything that's going on in the country these days, everything that's going on online these days and everything else. Well, let us, the audience members watching this determine whether or not it was a win or not. Beyond that, uh, the three of us, oh, you know what, I'm going to do some intros first. So, of course, you guys know Candace Owens, Red Pill Black. Uh, Candace was a guest on this show uh, just about three weeks ago, and I think that was one of the things that kind of put you on the map. And then uh, just uh, literally about four or five days later, it seems that this whole explosion about what social autopsy is or what... Um, I just want to point out here, so yeah, three weeks ago she did a Ruben report in discussions with her channel and all that, so shortly after, a lot of people have been coming out of the woodworks uh, that Candace believes is stalking her or uh, who are conspiracy theorists who are doing this in order to shut her down. Um, a lot of what she'll be saying is this is in regards to jealousy issues or envy based on views and all that jazz. I don't know if I believe that truly or not, but I'll let you... I'll let you decide on that. 
was kind of happened. Uh, anyway, welcome back to the Ruben Report. I didn't know it was going to happen that quickly. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah. I'm happy you're hosting this. Yeah. And uh, to my right is Blair White, who is a friend of mine who has been on the show a couple times. Woo! I just have to interject. Blair, your boob job. And uh, third, time. third time now, you have entered. That is a rare. Is group. it? That is a rare. I think we have a couple four timers, but. You might be the one three-timer right we'll now. We'll go for four next time. We will definitely go for four. Uh, but you are an absolutely outspoken and I think a reverend fighter against so many of the forces that I'm fighting against all the time. And and both of you, I think, are fearless defenders of the things that you care about. Uh, just a couple other quick things. I think that the three of us sitting here, if I dare use a little of identity politics against itself for a moment. Gay, the, trans, black? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, this should be good. I mean, isn't this the whole rhetoric about feminism and intersectionality is for all people from different walks of life to join together and have great debate and talk about equal rights and shit like that. So again, right there, we have Blair White, a white trans woman who is pretty much conservative. She may not label as conservative, but she has more conservative views and definitely not liberal point of views. Then we have a liberal white gay male who, in the classical sense of the term liberal, is actually a liberal. He fights for what I feel a lot of us are fighting for, freedom of speech rights, uh, fundamental human rights, uh, libertarianism, uh, having consequences to the things that we say or do. Um, so he is a classical liberal in that sense. And then we have Candace Owens, a black female, black woman, who used to be liberal, who is now conservative. Um, I think a lot of people's response videos to Candace right now are emphasizing how very much of an SJW she is. And an SJW to me is a person who was constantly whining, who talks over other people to silence them, to try and dominate the conversation, are you know moral, morally superior to everybody else and they think they know everything. When a lot of the times SJWs, they don't know everything and they're doing it for they're doing it for the right reasons, I guess, but their tactics are not. They are meant to dominate the conversation. They are there to slander people and attack the person and not what is being said. So throughout this video, I think you will see uh, how a lot of people arguing that Candace is in fact an SJW and not somebody with good intent. Uh, that will reveal itself in the video. Let's continue. Right. A black conservative, a, a trans woman who who really leans right. If not, I don't. Do you call yourself a conservative? Yeah, it's easiest. Okay, so, so okay, so we've got a black conservative, a trans conservative, a, a gay liberal. But I'm an old school liberal, which is everything against identity politics these days. I just want to point out, like again, I didn't know that <laughs> Ruben was actually gay. So this kind of changes my perspective of him a little bit more, and really makes me want to watch his stuff a lot more. So. See, not all gays are up to date with all of the gays you know. I know none of us care about that stuff per se, but I think it's important just to put it out there that we're, we're doing this and that, that in and of itself is a little bit of a, of a statement right there. Mm -hmm. And we're doing this face to face and more importantly than anything else perhaps, we all were lefties. Yes. We all were on the other side of perhaps where we're at now politically. Yeah. Uh, so they're all lefties who are way more conservative, or in this case with Ruben, you know, somewhere in the middle, uh, or more conservative, but with the label of liberal. I'm in the same boat. I am a minority as well with more conservative views. It's wildly different. Yeah. Like three years ago. Yeah. That's not that long ago. You were wildly different. 18 months ago. 18 months yeah. ago. And I've kind of had a, a slow evolution over these last couple of years. And I think all of those things are worth saying because I think actually that there's a lot that we do agree on and hopefully we can get to some of that. But I know you guys are watching. <laughs> hopefully is the uh, the key word here. <laughs> you want to find out more about what actually happened with Candace's website, Social Autopsy. Now, she explained this fully to me uh, when we sat down about a month ago. And then after that, a bunch of YouTubers started making videos about her comments on it. Was, was some of it true? It sounds like maybe some definitions were slightly confused. I think I've talked enough. I thought the best way to start. 
Yeah, so as far as I'm aware about all this drama, uh, I learned this social autopsy by Candace Owens uh, through Tree of Logic. I watched her videos on that, which I suggest that you go watch because she breaks down what social autopsy is and how it does and what exactly happened or transpired uh, when Candace first started social autopsy, nobody noticed it. And then Tree of Logic noticed. And then all these videos from other YouTubers came out. And this is when Candace Owens started reacting. She started blocking people on Twitter who asked these questions, who made accusations. Um, she's also changed her social autopsy website. Um, I actually was a subscriber of Candace Owens at Red Pill Black uh, on YouTube. I was a subscriber because, again, I related to a lot of what she was t uh, saying, right? Now, after watching Tree of Logic's video on social autopsy, I went back and I unsubscribed from Candace Owens because I just want to point out here my personal stance on doxing. Um, this website sounds like it obtains information private information of people that are on uh, social media, whether by their real name or, you know, uh, animosity purposes, you, this website sounds like it can take information of whoever that you, the viewer, put in uh, and stores the information. But the question is, which I don't think Candace really answers here, is why create a site to do this in the first place. Now she's got to go on about a backstory about her intention about this. So we'll see how that goes. Would be for you simply to just explain once again, your involvement in social autopsy and, and why you did it and sort of where it's at at the moment. And then we'll go from there. Right. So I just want to start off because we just had a conversation off camera. She posted something that said my predictions, um, that I talked about. I'm not comfortable using the she pronoun, uh, not because I, it's not anything to be disrespectful, it's just that a lot of people that follow me don't know that Blair is trans, and a lot of people that follow her maybe don't know me, vice versa, and I think that it betrays the audience when you make it sound like this is a petty cat fight and there are two girls sitting across from a table when in fact... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right here. So again, I have watched this before, so you're getting my reaction about this. What Candace is doing is saying that she doesn't respect uh, the she pronouns for Blair White. So Blair White is a trans woman, technically born a male, who transitioned into a female. Now, what Candace Owens does, uh, she says that she's not being disrespectful, but actually, in my opinion, she is. So we have two candidates for a, a debate, and to do the adult civil thing, you have to respect your opponent, even though you disagree on your topic. Um, so I support Blair White. Now, my stance on trans people is that I don't really care how you identify. I don't care if you were born male and want to be a female. I don't care if you're a woman, born a woman, and want to come off as a male. I don't really care about that as it doesn't affect me. Um, I've also been mistaken as trans numerous times, so I can kind of relate as to the frustration trans people go through. So myself personally, if I was sitting in Can Candace's spot across from Blair White, which one day I hope so, I would respect Blair White enough because I know that she is not a victim. She is somebody who is going through her own transition in order to pursue her own happiness. Um, not, you know, not only the fact that I do agree with Blair White on a lot of her ideas, but as an adult, I would respect her pronouns because she deserves that respect. I don't really respect trans people who are trying to cover up their origins or to lie about their identity or play victim just because they're trans. So anytime I get the notion that there's identity politics involved where they're like, I'm trans, you have to listen to me because I'm a victim of patriarchy bullcrap, that's when I start questioning it. So I don't respect trans people who are trying to piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. Okay. So Candace here, yes, she has a right to, um, to say this and that she won't use the pronouns, but automatically already she's disrespecting Blair White. And in my, in my position, I think she's trying to do this to dominate the start of this conversation by stating this fact. It is a grown man sitting across from a grown woman who has had a lot of things to say about me when I've never even met you or said a negative comment about you. Um, so I just want that to be very clear. 
happy to. So another SJW tactic here is that right now she started off this debate, not off the topic, but by attacking Blair White. So she's trying to get her audience members, her subscribers and followers to see that she is dominating this conversation. She's attacking Blair White right now and her identity uh, coming off with this moral high ground. Okay. So that I don't really like. It's very disrespectful regardless of what she says. So, so this, yeah, it, it should be Super known. Clear. We're both I, adults, you know, you're a grown man. No, no, we're definitely, we're definitely adults. I just think it's interesting how you act like you're above the ad hominems and you're above attacking someone when in reality, you and I both know that the situation is you're using those pronouns and you're saying what you're saying, calling me a grown man. That's because, not a tech, that's no, a fact. No, let me think. No, and sh okay, so Blair's starting to talk about, she's, she's here to defend herself, essentially, as to why Candace is doing this. Uh, Candace has already interrupted which is another SJW tactic, okay? SJWs will yell over people or interject or always interrupt somebody else to kind of fuddle their points from getting across to the audience. So Blair is trying to defend herself while using, you know, fairly common sense that nobody is above name calling or ad hominems. Blair has done it. Candace has done it. I too have done it. I've admitted it. But normally certain people, when we use ad hominems, is either for, you know, just to slander that person or for good reasons. For instance, uh, I've done video responses to Riley Dennis, a transgender uh, SJW feminist. And any time that I've insulted um, Riley Dennis, it's usually because of her ideas. Um, I'm also using uh, her and she pronouns towards Riley because I don't know Riley personally and I don't wish to attack Riley. What I do is attack Riley's ideas. And a lot of times, the more, the more craziness that comes out of the YouTuber Riley Dennis, the more likely that I'm not going to respect their pronouns because I think they're just crazy. But anyways, back to the discussion. Uh, you're doing that in a way to be passive aggressive and petty, but in a way that your audience doesn't actually read because you do have the very hardcore conservative audience. And so they're not really going to read it as petty. Everyone else will. No, I don't want them to think that this is. And here I think she makes an excellent point. And it's pretty much how I feel about it too, watching this debate. Fight between two girls. It's not. I'm saying That's that you are. It, no, it's, it's very. Well, Candace factually is correct on this. It is a born male up against a born female. But a trans woman is somewhere in between, right? So Blair White is not a full male anymore, even though her, uh, her body is still technically male and most likely her DNA is male. So Candace isn't wrong, but she's implying this in a means to dominate the conversation, which I think is very tacky. It because it, it really isn't though, but we can but we can move on because it really isn't about how she dresses. Me and biology really don't care about that. Man, I'm happy to again. Blair Wright, Blair White is correct in this: is that this has nothing to do with Blair's pronouns. This has nothing to do with transgenderism. That isn't the topic at hand. The topic at hand is social autopsy, and if Candace's intent is good or bad with this website, that is the topic at hand, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and we must remember that. It's not about Blair White, but Candace is making it about Blair White. Just another SJW tactic. Deflection. Totally for the rest so that we can move on from the pronoun thing. Right. To your question. Like, so yeah, I would say, look, she, look, but you have to start by calling me a man. Okay. That, that, that but I want to make it clear sense. because I, I, don't, want, I don't want to have to afterwards say, if you are, this is your stance on trans, why did you sit across from a trans person and call them she? So I'm making it clear because as we know, you guys like to dig up every single thing that I do in every single man. How I dug up everything? Oh, another SJW tactic by Candace Owens. She's now victimizing herself in this situation. So she's trying to come off as like, this is my way of, uh, uh, this is the, the way I look at trans communities. This is my stance. I have a right to say it. And technically she's right, but she's now victimizing herself to put stigma against Blair White being a trans woman. She's using it to her advantage. So this is how this debate is going. And I'm going to warn you, this is going to turn into a bitch of a show. Okay. Like it's, you know, pull up a beer or whatever you want and, and I'm ready to go because it's a shit show. Okay. 
So again, Candace has deflected from the topic at hand, which is social autopsy and her intent. She's attacked Blair White. She's tried to dominate the conversation. And now she's victimizing herself all within the span of about five minutes. So this should be good. Out of everyone, Candace, there's been a lot of YouTubers that have come out against you. So I actually have a question before we go. Um, out of all the YouTubers who have dug stuff up about you, I never made a video. I'm a YouTuber. If I don't think something- You jumped on a video. I jumped on a video. It was a four hour stream. Um, so just to pause it here, it sounds like Blair White's just defending herself here, saying that she's never actually made a response video to social autopsy and Candace, whereas a lot of other YouTubers have, such as Tree of Logic, I believe uh, Andy Worski has, uh, uh, my uh, computing forever has actually done something like that. Um, I think even Sargon has done one. I haven't done one yet. So this is my response video. Um, so there's a lot of YouTubers who are taking notice of Candace and are making criticisms about her actions. Whereas Blair White really hasn't. Which I was on for probably 15 minutes. An hour and 15 minutes. I was, exactly. I was, I was not on a stream for an hour and 15 minutes. You were on for an hour and 15 minutes until Barbara came on the stream. I watched I it. Not and I, out All right, so you know, let's do this. Let's just. So Candace is quite obsessed with uh, Blair White right now, and I think it's it's brought up later into this live debate as to why Candace chose Blair White to debate this instead of say Tree of Logic. So Candace is aware that Blair White was on a live stream uh, with other YouTubers in regards to Candace. I don't. I haven't seen it. Okay, and I probably won't watch it. I don't know but there's a lot of slandering, a lot of name throwing and mudslinging. So she's using this, I think, as a means to further stigmatize Blair White and to further victimize herself. Clean this up so we don't, I just don't wanna to get too lost in the weeds of, of every little word, I think. Look, you guys know my feelings about free speech. Right. You are, I'm not gonna tell you what to say, right. how to refer to Blair and, and Blair can obviously right. defend herself. We can do all. And that's, that's the way it should be. Thank you, Ruben. But just so we don't get too lost in that stuff, let, let's just try to stick to the original right. story here. I think it's fine that you, you premised it that way. You defended yourself. I think that's that's totally fine. Um, this I disagree with Ruben here. He's stating that Candace framed it that way in a good way, and I don't think that at all. She's using SJW tactics in order to attack her opponent and not the subject at hand. She's doing it, as Blair said, passive aggressively. So I don't think she's doing it with the good intentions. But we could end up in the, in the back part of this forever. Correct. So let's just get to the, to the, how did this whole thing start? Okay, so the backstory to the backstory, obviously you know about social autopsy, but there's a, a very relevant part of this, which is essentially that when I was in high school, I had an experience that happened to me, and it's something that I like to talk about factually, and I hate talking about it because... She hates talking about it, but yet she'll bring it up here right now so a backstory of a backstory so if it basically what it is she's got to go into her own personal life story and i think this is the story that uh she's using to showcase her her good intentions for social autopsy so she's not even she's still not talking about social autopsy the reason why she set it up when it was set up and the resulting consequences of that website so this is her personal story a lot of times social justice warriors will always fall back on anecdotal stories. So this is clearly an SJW tactic. She's trying to gain sympathy here from the audience. It involves other people and I'm out here talking about my opinions, my beliefs. When you're involving other people, I think it's a little unfair. Um, when I was um, a junior in high school, I received about one night I was sitting on a couch with my boyfriend and I received anonymous phone calls. Um, and at the end of watching Talladega Nights with my boyfriend, I picked up the phone, I listened to the voicemails, and they were people, four boys, that were screaming back and forth, calling me a dirty nigger, saying we're gonna tar and feather your family, saying uh, you're, we're gonna do to you like we did to Martin Luther King, put a bullet in the back of your head. Uh. Okay, so first off, now she's got her personal story out there, and it has to do with racism. And I'm very sorry to say this, but most of the time when it comes to anecdotal stories regarding black people a lot of it has to do with racism so yes black people deal with racism but so too does every other demographic of people white people experience it uh hispanic people experience it asian experiences it. so 
the thing is, is that black people think that they are the only ones who suffer from racism and racist uh, tendencies of other of other races. But that's not true. Um, I just find it very uh, funny that Candace is using the racism card uh, in this story. And I find it very interesting that these four boys who have called her and left a voicemail, these would have to be boys who know her phone number. These would have to be boys that she must know in some way or has friends who are friends with these boys in order for them to get her phone number. So I just want to I just want to draw attention to that, that these boys knew her phone number in order to leave messages in and leave racist uh, voicemails for her made references to Rosa Parks. It was really probably the nastiest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. After hearing that, and by the way, this is not a victim story, it's just something that factually happened that you guys can all research. Yeah, it's sounding like a victim story because you're starting that off as a personal anecdote and you're, it's involving racism. So right now you are victimizing yourself based around the idea that you are a black female. And we all know that leftists love that narrative. After hearing those voicemails, I went to school the next day and I, I didn't call the cops or anything, but I was a little terrified because I didn't know, I did not know four people that wanted to see me dead and that hated me, period. Uh, see, here's the thing. She's now stated that she's been terrified of, of these voicemails. So first she says that she doesn't want to bring up this backstory and then she does. And then she says that she got voicemails from four boys going back and forth, uh, saying really racist things and hurtful things to her. So she didn't call the cops, even though she was terrified, okay? Even though technically that was a hate crime, what these boys did. And she brushes over the fact that these boys knew her phone number. That means that she would have to have known these guys. So right now I'm calling bullshit. Um, I went to school the next day. The teacher essentially was, we were talking in a philosophy class. I brought up what had happened. It was like a moment where it made sense to bring up what happened the night before. And the teacher jumped up and said, like, you're going to the principal right now. You're reporting this. Like, that's very serious. Like, I want to take you right now. He picks me up, going to the principal's office, and she hears the voicemails, which I... St which is good. The teacher responded in the appropriate way because this can fall under a racist hate crime. So she, in this victim narrative, is actually a victim of racism. So before Candace made a decision not to go to the police... But she certainly made the decision to bring it up in her philosophy class. Huh. Interesting. For three of them, and she made the decision to call the police. Like, totally out of, I would have never called the police or I would have done it the night before. You heard that. She would have never called the police, but yet she was terrified to go to school with these boys that she didn't know, but magically got her phone number. Hmm turns out um, by some random stroke of like super misfortune that one of the kids that was in the car when they left these voicemails happened to be the current governor of Connecticut's son. Hmm. And Okay, so I don't know the, the governor that she's bringing up here. I don't know that much about <laughs> uh, people's personal lives and governmental things about the states. But anyway, so she found out who one of the boys were and now she's bringing in this governor person uh, and I feel like she's gotta she's gotta talk about this stuff a little bit more so it would have normally been like maybe like a tap on the finger sort of a thing this turned into an FBI investigation um, and you know the then mayor was making comments that were very like you know political it became political so all of a sudden I'm, I'm in it's funny how she says that there's FBI, uh, it's an FBI case. And if it's an FBI case for racist texting, only because it was the son of a governor, I don't know why the FBI would be included in this. Like police forces, yes, the, the state police, of course, but FBI, just for Candace Owens. So here, here I think is another SJW tactic is where she's elevating herself or elevating her backstory to more than what it is. Okay, so she's elevating herself and she's diminished or tried to diminish Blair White in order to come off as the victim. Okay. 
when I got the NAACP on the front steps. I'm very, if you know anything about me, I hate the NAACP because of this. I think that they are a trash group and that they literally extort black people's emotions for pay. Um, okay, so this sounds like in the realm of conspiracy theories and she's greatly assuming here. Okay, she's making huge assumptions. I mean, based on her feelings, fine, that's hunky-dory. But again, she brought up four boys that she says she doesn't know who got her phone number, left racist voicemails, the teacher responded, and then told the principal, who then called the cops, and now the FBI is involved over racist tweets for her. Uh, like, it just, it seems so far-fetched to me. It seems so far-fetched. Another thing, Blair, you don't know where I sound anything for you to call me a fraudulent conservative. You don't know the things that I've lived through. So that was something that I didn't really understand. Uh and again, you're falling back on your anecdotal life story. And if this is all true, if it is all true, you know, I'm sorry that it happened to you. But how is this explaining your intent for social autopsy, which is a potential doxing website? Because you say that you believe in freedom of speech, you say that you're this good person, but you've created a website that's questionable in regards to obtaining people's personal identification and personal information, which some person other than you can pull out of this database and potentially fuck up their lives. This, it, this is what our concern is right now. And no offense, I'm not really interested in her backstory about this, especially since she's used the racism shtick. So. A lot of things I don't understand too, so I'm, I have a million questions for you because unfortunately you'd have me blocked up until like two days ago right. over one tweet I sent to you. So, no, it was uh, a lot. Okay, and this is where it kind of goes down spiraling uh, between both of them. This is, I don't like it when a debates have to focus around Twitter, right? So Twitter is a cesspool, as I've stated before, um, of opinions and backstabbing and SJWism and retardedness. So, but what Blair is gonna use as a point here is that she interacted with Candace on Twitter and Candace blocked her after one or two tweets. Now, this is another SJW tactic where if you are, if you do something, if you say something, and people take notice of it and realize that it might not be with good intentions, it might not have good consequences, when they are presented with these kind of questions or these facts, they just block. They block, they delete, they, uh, they disassociate themselves from conversation, from having any sort of dialogue. So this is, this is what this has got to showcase here. Blair was blocked by Candace, and apparently Candace has blocked numerous other people on Twitter after this, uh, after this social autopsy thing came out. It was a live stream. I went on a live stream for a while. It was not stream. straight on 15 minutes. I hope people go and fact check that because it's not on there for that long. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, again, uh, you had me blocked before the live stream. You had me blocked before the live stream. So, and you had a million people blocked. You blocked everyone. Right. I'm going to get into completely... that. I just want to, I want to finish I know, but this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Now, here I think Blair is a little bit uh, over-exaggerating. I'm pretty sure Candace hasn't blocked millions of people, but I think she's trying to emphasize that Candace did go on a blocking tirade and probably she probably got presented with a lot of people calling her out on this social autopsy website and then she just decided to block them. So that's another SJW tactic. You instantly block people you don't like or you instantly block people who disagree with you. I was saying first, uh, you had a but million talking, people blocked. So that doesn't really so... make sense. But she was talking and that doesn't make any sense. Candace, you had your backstory, your victim story to, you know, s supposedly show your good intent with social autopsy. You've had your turn. This is called a dialogue, meaning it takes two to have a conversation, not just you. So right now, this is another SJW tactic that Candace is doing where she's interrupting her opponent. So let Blair talk, please, and then we can get down. <clears throat> we can get down to the bottom of the discussion. No, I'm just saying I'm glad that we're actually having a conversation because prior to this, the reason why it's actually gone to the point where I have to do on the Rubin report rather than just a quick exchange on Twitter or you making a video on your own channel is because you've blocked conversations. So I just want to be. So again, she's pointing out the SJW tactic that Candace has done, and that. Um, Blair wanted to create a dialogue. She had a few questions to ask and the instant response by Candace was to block. 
you're allowed to tweet out your trash and I, I am supposed uh -huh. to then defend myself rather than you. you yeah, that's called <laughs> anybody will have to defend themselves when they come up with uh, something that they've said or something that they've done. And in this case, you have said things and actually physically done something called a website of social autopsy, which a lot of people are concerned with, which is a doxing website. People are concerned that you're going to be allowing people to dox other people using your website. So the, we're questioning your intent on that. And now you are on the defense. So of course you're supposed to defend yourself. Anybody would. First for answers. You're, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely not supposed to defend yourself. You don't have to do anything. Right. You, you, so you're, you're, free, you're, my, my, you're insulted free. that I blocked you after no, 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 you no. insulted me publicly to what do you have, 130,000? Does, does that even make sense to you like saying that right now? Candace. Candace, you Candace is deflecting here. She keeps deflecting, which is ugh, frustrating. Who cares about how many viewers uh, or subscribers that Blair has? Who cares how many viewers or subscribers that Candace has? Who cares about how many subscribers I have, which is just under 2,000? Like, it doesn't matter, okay? That is, that is drivel. That's just shit that nobody cares about, okay? What we care about is this website that you have created, which potentially can dox people and ruin their lives. That is the focus, and she keeps deflecting away from it. Every right to block me. There's no, you, don't, you can not respond, you can respond, you can block me, whatever it is. What I'm saying is, people are criticizing the way that you've handled the situation. You have the backstory, which I will absolutely let you finish, but the way you're dealing with people calling out the story and calling out things that they think maybe are fraudulent, maybe they're not fraudulent, maybe you can clear that up, is you haven't actually cleared it up. You've blocked. And she is 100% correct here. Many people are criticizing her actions. They're criticizing the intent behind social autopsy. We're not attacking her as a black woman who identifies as conservative, that's not the issue. The issue is whether or not this website that you have promoted is going to potentially fuck up people on the internet. <sighs> Everyone. People can attest to that. Everyone. Andy Worski, Bunty King, um, Dave Collin, who actually provided screenshots of the things he said to you. So unlike me, I can see you blocking me for calling you trash. And honestly, I'll say I'm sorry for calling you trash. That's totally fine. Well, okay, so she apologized for calling Candace Owens trash. So I think this is from that live stream that Candace is so, so obsessed with in regards to Blair White. So I would suggest you watching that live stream uh, if you want to get more of what exactly what Blair said. As him, he sent like four or five very respectful tweets, just asking for questions, asking for your side of the story. So if he made a video, he could I would just like that. to. The, right, well, hold on. Finalize, you speaking, they made the videos and then asked questions. I don't do that. I'm um, not. I, I, I don't. Well, everybody can make a video and then ask questions. Like they can. It's 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 everybody trying to grab a hold of the grab a get a grasp of the situation. And so Tree of Logic made her videos, which I got exposed to. And now I'm responding to this video and I have a lot of questions as well that are very similar to Blair's. So people react to something when they're first presented with something and then they'll go into questions. So it's just typical human behavior, Candace. You would do the exact same thing too. With terrorists, you don't get to make a the video terrorists. about me lying. Terrorists, another SJW tactic, mislabel things that are not actually what they are. So a lot of the leftist, uh, regressive left people will claim, you know, Richard Spencer is a Nazi, but he's not really a Nazi. Anybody who disagrees with you is a Nazi, is Hitler, is a terrorist. So just throwing that out there willy nilly, Candace. Good job, sweetheart. Good job. YouTube and then terrorists. saying, now you better come to me and answer me. Who does that? That's, right, that's, on, that's the on, opposite on, way of on, handling hold anything. Hold on, hold it's, on. It's an expression. I don't negotiate with terrorists. Don't take it to heart. It's an expression. I'm not taking it to heart. It's an expression. It's an expression. But I totally just dropped the word terrorist because everybody understands what the word terrorist is and it implies something negative, something evil, something persons who steal the fundamental human rights of other people who cause uh, terrorism and, and acts of violence and barbarism. Yeah, I'm just going to willy nilly drop the word terrorist in this conversation. Way to deflect. 
which is kind of silly. All right, hold it's on. an expression. Hold it's on, we got we got to get the full story before because otherwise there's going to be enough people watching this that still aren't clear on right. the full story. Right, exactly because Candace is deflecting and she keeps deflecting away from the topic. The topic is her website. The topic is whether or not this website is has the potential to dox people. <sighs> That if we go too far into the follow-up, we're, we're going to get lost here. By the way, I just really quick want to mention that when you texted me and said, I, I want to do this on your show, and I'd like to do it with Blair, I thought about it for a minute because I wasn't even sure if I wanted to get involved in this. I think that this Twitter, YouTube drama, I think, causes, it's partly, we're all here because of just this drama machine that just endlessly drags everybody. Yep, and he's right. And with Twitter, you can get lost amongst all the opinions, amongst all the crap, amongst all the mudslinging, this is why we have to stick to the facts. Candace isn't doing that. But to, to both of your credit, you asked me to do it, and I texted you, and literally within 30 seconds, you said you would do it. And there, that's, that's, that, people should know that because yeah. this is, we live in a time when no one backs themselves up. They hide and say all this crap. So right. I just want to put that up. Yes, and this is why there's animosity on the internet. People make multiple accounts on Facebook or Twitter or other social media outlets. Uh, this is why I'm more open with my identity, and this is why I show my face, because I want to showcase to people the honesty that I have. I want people to see who who they're hearing about. I don't want to hide behind a cartoon icon. I don't want to hide behind an emoji. I just want you guys to see me and hear my voice. And and by seeing by seeing somebody's true face, you can get a further depth of their true intent. That's what I think, so... Let, but let's just let's just get through the story right. and then we can then we can do the rest. Long story short, this was categorized as a hate crime. The FBI was involved. I was out of school for about um, six weeks, and just imagine like I didn't even want to report it, and then having like what felt like your entire life. It was front page of Connecticut newspapers um, for two months of people. So if the FBI were involved in this hate crime and she was taken out of school for six weeks, that means that there is newspaper articles in regards to the FBI case. Which means, um, now if she's younger, the newspaper would probably hide her uh, true name uh, for privacy purposes. So, But if the FBI were involved, the Connecticut newspapers would have stated this story. So I think we should actually investigate whether or not this is true or not. Uh, I actually, I think Tree of Logic. I think this would be a perfect opportunity for you to see if she's actually telling the truth with this backstory or if she's lying. If she's telling the truth, then she's telling the truth, and she has her good intent behind uh, the social autopsy website. If she's lying, therefore she's using this lie as a means to justify her good intentions. And a lot of the stuff that you had to read, because remember the FBI was involved, so they wouldn't make any arrests, they wouldn't do anything because they wanted to dot their I's and cross T's, they're dealing with a politician, a democratic politician, right? And he's not being honest. He could have easily just been like, my kid did something really stupid. He's trying to be a politician, essentially. And Well, I mean, we don't really know that for a fact. We're only, it, we're only basing it off your own word and your own story. Unless there is physical evidence, such as a newspaper story and newspaper articles in regards to this governor, then we can't really prove that this is true or not. Hmm. When these arrests were finally made or while the investigation was going on, people were just on the internet just speculating, just like and not being aware that they were talking about children. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I'm saying? I was probably the eldest. I was 17 years old. The, this youngest person in that car, I didn't know. Okay, so she's 17 years old in Connecticut when this hate crime supposedly happened to her and the FBI were involved. One of them was the son of the governor of uh, Connecticut, a Democratic governor. Uh, so since this involved politicians, uh, I want to see if the FBI kept it hush-hush or it was exposed, you know, like she said it was, and we can get some validity to her story. Then, by the way, this was like a drunk phone call. I knew one kid out of the four kids. The youngest kid that caught 15 years old. So these kids are getting called racist. Okay? And I personally, like, I hate labels like racism. I hate them. You call somebody racist, sexist. It really stings me because I think it's wrong. 
And yet you identify as a conservative. You went from liberal to conservative. So, I mean, I can get that, that nobody really likes labels because we want to keep identity politics out of it. Um, I have used identity politics in my arguments online in order to, you know, prove a point or to catch somebody in the act of being hypocritical. I don't like using it. I'm, I usually like, well, as, as an LGBT person, I disagree. Or as a bisexual male, you don't speak for me. So I've used this before too. I'm not denying it, but labels are important. Um, they might be frivolous to some people, but labels are important because to other people around them, getting a label will automatically give them uh, a little bit more information as to who that person is and what they believe in. So for instance, like Candace, I once identified as a liberal and now more conservative. When people hear the term conservative, they are now thinking about, you know, believing in traditional families, possibly traditional marriage, um, having conservative views on gun control or how the state should work, uh, how to uphold laws. You know, basically, since I am more conservative, I have not so liberal viewpoints anymore because of the regressive left. So people get a little bit of a leg up when they know what your label is. Long story short, guys, labels are important. So she's trying to just deviate away from labels, so.